Hey guys, hope this is working and having a problem with the camera. Uh, so, uh, welcome to uh, yesterday, and I'm saying that because uh, it's 9.30 in, in the evening, and uh, I'm going to go to sleep soon, so I'm not going to post this video tonight. It's be uh, tomorrow. Hi, I bet. It takes me a long time to post a video because, uh, you know, this isn't a, a digital camera that I can just wire up to the computer and then, uh, you know, uh, you know, download the video directly and then uh, upload it. You know, I have to to transfer the video from a, a, the, the VHS to the D, a blank DVD, and then put the DVD into my computer and extract the DVD, then convert it. So it takes a long time, you know, anyway. Um, now I've been thinking a bit about hockey recently. Uh, how do, I haven't watched much recently, but I want to tell you what I thought about... Uh, the, the Montreal Canadiens, you know, in the, the past uh, 15 years, it's, it's, they've been a pretty miserable team. I, I started watching them uh, in 94, uh, 93-94 season, and it, it was a pretty pathetic uh, a decade and a half. I think everybody would agree with that. But, you know, I have a theory why the Canadians have had so much problems since, uh, since that time, and I'm trying to you know, get a, like a tunnel inside the, 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 the tomato. Oh, yeah. and, and my theory is this. You know, the Canadians are a very popular team, right? And, um, you know, everybody wants the Canadians to, to win. And it's like, you know, they're, they're, they're so popular and everybody's going nuts over them. And, you know, it's like, people say it's like a religion or something. But the, the, the downside to that is that everybody wants the team to win, right? It, it's not like if when the Canadians are not doing well, that everybody just stops watching them and say, "Oh well, we're going to watch football," or you know, there it's not like in Pittsburgh where where they had the Steelers or whatever. It's it, here, aside from the Canadians, you know, maybe the Alouettes, but it's it's not the same thing. It's it's it, the, the the stature. I mean, it, it's it's not the same thing. So every year, people want the Canadians to to make the playoffs and then when they made the playoffs when everything's possible right and the result has been a bit perverse because I think if you wanna to win you, you have to start by losing because aside from Carey Price I don't think there has been even one time in, in the past uh, 15 years or ever since the 94 lockout that the Canadians have drafted you know the top five or if they've been in the top ten in the draft, it must have been uh, rare. Um, every time there's this really top rookie, you know, he's going to be a 50-goal scorer like Pavel Brendel or whatever, uh, the Canadians are never among one of the top teams that, that you know, are going to, to draft them. They're always, uh, oh, shit, I made a little... Okay, anyway, um, so when you have 15 years of constantly constantly being an average team uh, with the exception of last year they finished first in the conference but that was an exception but being when you're constantly an average team uh, you never really progress that much you know you have to to build your team with trades and free agents I mean the only big goal scorer the team has is Kovalev and he's old now and you got age catching up with him and uh, I mean, it's not his fault if he's not as good as last year or he's not as good as uh, you know when he was with Lang and Strack a few years ago. Um, I mean, you know, when you get to 35, 36, your hands aren't you know as quick as they used to be. You don't have the agility you used to have, you know. And uh, I remember that was a season uh, a few years ago. It must have been in late 90s, I think, or early 2000, late 90s. You can check it in the statistics. And uh, that season, there was no player in the Canadian, not even one player, who had 20 goals. And um, I don't know if it was that season or the season before or the season after. It was sometime in the late 90s that at some point uh, during the season, I think it was early, maybe uh, November or December, the Canadians were actually last in the league. They, they were the last team in the league. And everybody was panicking. And uh, there's this journalist called uh, Bertrand Raymond who was very influential. I'm going to have to repair that. Wait a minute. Okay. There's this journalist called Bertrand Raymond who's very uh, 
influential in Montreal sports and he wrote an article and he said uh, you know we've hit the bottom of the barrel the Canadians are finally last in the league look at how deep we've fallen you know and he was all shocked and angry and and you know the thing is Canadians start going up in the standings and uh, you know the same thing that happened in 2000-2001 you know the Canadians could have finished last and I think Kovalchuk was up uh, that year in the draft uh, they could have finished uh, among the last, but they didn't. They start keep winning, and that year, uh, Jose Theodore was starting to, you know, near the end of the season, he had some great games. He was starting to show some signs that he might have become a star, and um, that he got 15 years, in which uh, the Canadians missed out on pretty much every time. You know, there was a big prospect. And you can see the result last year in the playoffs against uh, Philadelphia. There, I have to repair the little side. I just want to have a hole in the middle. Last year in the playoffs against Philadelphia, wait a minute. I uh, have some... Uh, uh, they, last year in the playoffs against uh, Philadelphia, uh, you could see that, you know, the big problem that, of the Canadians was glaringly obvious, I think, during that series. And, they they ran into this hot goaltender below and uh, they just couldn't get past him. And th they have a lot of fast players. They played well as a team. Uh, they have great positioning game and all that. The problem is that they they didn't have, you know, a player like, you know, Kovalchuk or you know Yarmir Yager, a player like that, who was a, you know, an expert goal scorer who could take any goaltender, uh, no matter how hot he was and. And, and just and just beat him. And I think the the reason why the Canadians lost against Philadelphia, no matter how well they played and how much they dominated in time possession, uh, you know, puck possession time or or shots on goal, is simply because they didn't have this big goal scorer who could just deliver. Uh, that they missed so many scoring chances and uh, and I think that was a result of all these years, you know. Of uh, drafted, drafting like 10 overall or whatever, and always missing out on the prospects, and then trying to get the big players in trades or in free agents when those players were past their prime, uh, like you know, Kovalev, you know, whatever. I you know, remember back in '84, you know, uh, when uh, there was Marla Lemieux breaking the records in the juniors in Laval, you had this uh, young journalist. Uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, Chantal Maccabi, who was, you know, she's still, uh, you know, on TV covering sports, and then she was playing cards with Mario back then. You know, she was following that team. That was a long time ago, and he was breaking all the records. It was going to be first overall, and and the Penguins tanked the season. Uh, they really tanked the season because no one cared that they could do it. I mean, uh, the, they might have lost some ticket sales or whatever, but you know, they didn't have many fans anyway, and. Uh, well, they had a lot of fans, but they couldn't uh, fill the arena, and, and, and you know things weren't going well. No one really cared that much. They were thinking, and um, how do I cut this? Oh, ah, got it. And um, look at what happened. They drafted Mario because they tanked. You know, I'm sure that Kirk Muller was a great player, and uh, I mean he won the cup. Uh, in Montreal and uh, he contributed he was a great defensive player and all that but you know Kirk Muller you know he's not anywhere near Mario Lemieux and I don't think that Kirk Muller would have had the same impact in Pittsburgh that Mario Lemieux had and, and, and you know you have to lose in order to win and that's why uh, I'm saying the Canadians should get rid of Carey Price and uh, get me as, as their, their goaltender for the rest of the season forget the season just forget about it just tank it uh, you know, put me in that, and uh, they're gonna lose every game for the ne rest of the season, and they're gonna, you know, draft uh, <laughs> in the top five, and uh, and they're gonna get this great player, and they're gonna be the best team in the league. I mean, I'm pretty good at losing games. You know, back when I was playing soccer in high school, I remember at some point, uh, you know, in soccer when you you're a goaltender, you catch the ball, right, and then you have to, you know, kick it to the other end of the field so that the players are going to uh, you know get it whatever so I remember during a game in high school as a goaltender I, I blocked the ball and I, I was I tried to kick it to the other end of the field and I accidentally kicked it in my own net now I don't know how that happened but 
it did. I, I kicked the ball in my own net. Okay, so the purpose here is to cook the tomato on the inside, not on the outside. So I, I put the stuff in here. We're going to use some uh, liquid wrench. Anyway, uh, but see, you put me on the Canadians uh, as a goaltender, and, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, even if I try to stop the pucks, uh, you know, they're going to go by me anyway, so uh, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to sit there behind the net, and uh, I'm going to make recipes on the ice, you know, like I have my skates and I'm going to scratch, I'm going to be behind the net so that the players can score goals on me and, and I'm going to be scratching the ice with my skate and, uh, you know, making ice cream 